Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Layla and today I'm giving you an update on quarter three of 2023. This is the final quarterly update video of the year because the next one will be in January for the final quarter of 2023. Somehow we are here. These are some of my favorite videos. I know y'all love them too. So I'm gonna go through everything debt updates, online income, savings, net worth, investments, all the stuff and goals. That's exciting. So let's get into it. In the description box below, I will put quarter one's update as well as quarter two, if you wanna go back and watch those. I also do monthly updates. So if you're ever curious about what I earn on a monthly basis or how much I put to investments, what my net worth is looking like, I go over that every single month. But the quarterly updates are really fun because you kinda see a little bit more progress, you know? Instead of just looking at one month, you get to see three months and things usually look a little bit better. I can't say that for everything in, in quarter three though. We're gonna start with my debt because that's what I always start with. But this is the last time I will have to talk about my debt. I mean, I'm probably, I'm probably gonna talk about it again at some point, but no more updates on it. The only thing is that I am completely debt free now. I did that in quarter three. If this is the first video you're watching of mine, I encourage you, if you want to, you can go back and watch years of me <laughs> working toward paying off my debt. So I started my debt-free journey in June of 2018. I didn't start this YouTube channel until 2019, unfortunately though. I had over $82,000 of debt. A large chunk of that was student loans and that was the last debt that I was working on. And then once the pause ended on student loan debt, I made a big lump sum payment, paid off the full $36,000 that I had left and that was the last of it. So. Quarter three, I made a huge chunk of progress on my debt because I completely paid it off. I did go live for that. That was in, that was early September. That video is still on my YouTube channel. I was, I think I was on the live for like an hour. Again, thank y'all for coming to that. I'm probably gonna do lives every, I think it would be kind of fun to do a live every quarter because it was fun to get to talk to y'all in real time. And you know, it may not be talking about getting out of debt or sharing my, my debt numbers, but it could just be about anything with, with life and finances. So let me know if you would be interested in that. But yeah, I started off quarter three with $36,000 of debt and ended it at zero. And no, I did not come up with 36K in one month. I had been saving that for years throughout the pandemic when we had 0% interest. I was saving as much as I could in my high yield savings account so that my money was earning money in interest, and then that's how I was able to pay it all off in one month. Next is my online income. So this is from my business. I have a couple of blogs, a couple of YouTube channels. I do financial slash debt coaching. Sometimes I have sponsorships, and then affiliate sales is a big one. All of the numbers here are gross earnings. So I do have business expenses, and then I pay taxes on this as well. So in July, I earned $5,912, which was Definitely my strongest month, potentially my strongest month in the whole year. In August, I earned $2,533. And then in September, I earned $3,401 for a total of 11,846, which is amazing. That's, that's quite a bit of money. I did add up quarter one through quarter three, and all together I made $32,094 so far. And that actually allowed me to surpass my goal for the year. My goal was to earn at least 30,000 from my business. And yeah, I'm, I'm over that by the end of quarter three and we have a whole quarter ahead of us. Super exciting and this has never happened before. I say this all the time, but this is very new to me. Usually when I set online income goals, I don't hit them. Um, but yeah, 2023 has just been looking really good. This also isn't something that is like, hey, I just started this year and I've already made $30,000. I have been working toward this for quite some time. This isn't the first YouTube channel I've created. This isn't the first blog that I've created. Like I've, I've tried many things and I've been on the internet, like trying to build businesses for well over a decade now. So um, yeah, <laughs> it's very exciting to me, but please don't look at this as like, oh wow, she got that easily. Like if, it, if this is the first time you're seeing me or anything like that, just know that this, this did take years to get to. 
I break down my business earnings each month as well. I can link uh, September's in the description box if you're interested in where that money comes from. Let's get into investments. These are gonna be like my main accounts. My Roth IRA is first. At the end of quarter two, my Roth IRA was at 22,750. I didn't contribute anything to my Roth IRA because I had already maxed it out. I think I did that in quarter two. However, I did save $2,000 in my high yield savings account specifically for my Roth IRA for 2024, but that is just saved, it's not invested. And by the end of quarter three, it was unfortunately down. It was at $22,057, which is a decrease of 693. So yeah, I didn't contribute anything to it. I think there was some dividend activity in there and that gets reinvested. Uh, my whole Roth IRA is invested in VTSAX. So obviously that just goes to show that VTSAX is down, but that is okay. I expect that. And this is the perfect time to buy. If you are still able to contribute to your Roth IRA or even like your 401k to your brokerage account, this is a great time to buy it. Next would be my brokerage accounts. I decided to combine the two of them. So I have a brokerage account with M1 Finance, and then I have a brokerage account with Vanguard. M1 Finance is all invested in VTI, and then my Vanguard brokerage account is all invested in VGT. At the end of quarter two, if I added these both up, it was at $6,201. I did contribute $675, and this was all VGT with Vanguard, so I didn't add anything to M1 Finance. And then by the end of quarter three, my balance was $7,136, so an increase of $935. Next up is my 401k. This is through my employer, of course. For my 401k, I only have two index funds, two Vanguard funds. And honestly, I can't remember them right now, so I'll put them up on the screen. I'll, take, I'll go in and take a screenshot of that. At the end of quarter two, my 401k was at $11,732. In quarter three, I was contributing 10% of my income. At least I think it, yeah, it, was, it started in quarter three. That came to $1,764 from my pay, and then my company matches 6%, and that was $1,056. So altogether for quarter three, that was 2,820. And by the end of quarter three, my 401k was at $14,061, which is an increase of 2,329. So these funds were down as well because over $2,800 was put in, but only saw $2,300 in growth, but again, that's okay. Next, my savings, and this is specifically the money that I have in my sinking funds, including my emergency fund. The end of quarter two, I was at $14,289. I don't know the exact amount that I saved. Um, you'll see the difference, that's basically what I saved, but uh, it's to multiple sinking funds, including my like furniture fund, emergency fund, beauty, gifts, all this stuff. And and then sometimes I pull money out of my sinking fund, so it's just kind of hard to add everything up. But at the end of quarter three, my savings reached $24,891. So that's an increase of $10,602. The largest funds here, like what I was adding the most to was my emergency fund, furniture sinking fund, and then the Roth IRA sinking fund that I started. And that's, that's just saving for 2024. And then finally, my net worth. At the end of quarter two, that was at $58,194. At the end of quarter three, I reached $69,706. So a little short of my goal. I'll go over my goals in just a moment. Uh, this year, I really wanna reach $100,000 for my net worth. I don't think that's going to happen as I keep saying. And you know, quarter three was, I didn't see as much growth as I have been seeing. So let me say the difference. The difference from quarter two to quarter three was growth of $11,512, which is pretty good. But if I remember correctly for quarter two and for quarter one, I saw like $17,000 of growth. So um, yeah, definitely a slower quarter, but that is fine. Maybe in quarter four, we'll see that big growth again as well, but either way, it's, it's not a big deal. So let's talk about the goals that I set for quarter three. 
The first one was to get my emergency fund to $12,000 and I did that. My emergency fund is now over $12,000 and I'm just letting it stay at that. And then it's in my high yield savings account. So any interest that accrues there just stays there and continues to grow. Second goal was to get my furniture sinking fund to $6,000. I also was able to do that. Third goal was to earn over $10,000 from my online income and I did do that. So as I mentioned, about $11,800 from my business income. And then the final goal that I set was to have a net worth of $75,000 or more. And I did not reach that because as I said, my net worth was 69,706. So like $5,000 short or so. Net worth goals are always kind of like gambling with your goals, you know? There's no point of setting them. It's just kind of a fun number to look at and to go after but you can't really control your net worth entirely just because, especially if you have money in the stock market. Not too bad though, got three out of four. Then I did set some goals for quarter four. First one is to make at least $10,000 from my business again. Second goal is I want to reach $7,000 saved in my 2024 Roth IRA sinking fund. So then I can max out my Roth IRA right away if I wanted to in 2024, or I can dollar cost average. I haven't decided yet. I'm probably just gonna do a lump sum, just pop the whole 7K in there. I think the limit's gonna be 7K for 2024, but if not, it'll be, you know, like the 6,500 and I'll, I'll stop it there. My third goal is to start my sabbatical sinking fund. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, I have a whole video where I talk about my sabbatical plan and what I wanna do, what I wanna have saved and all of that. So I do want to start that as soon as possible. I probably won't be able to get to it until December. So I would like to put at least $2,000 to that sinking fund. And then finally, actually I didn't even set, I literally started writing a goal and I didn't know what to put. So a net worth goal. I wanna say that my net worth goal is 100,000, but that's not really realistic. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say a net worth goal of 90,000. That might be too much. That's that's $20,000 of growth. I'll be saving quite a bit. I won't be investing too much. Um, mm, let's go with 85. Let's go with 85. Honestly, I don't know. We'll say 85,000. Big impossible goal is 100,000. Even if I don't hit that in quarter four, I'm pretty positive I'll reach it in quarter one of 2024. And you know, that's that's not too far off. But yeah, those are my numbers for quarter three. Feel free to comment down below how the last three months went for you, or if you wanna share with us the, the goals that you set for quarter four, how you're feeling about quarter four, anything is welcome below. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. It really supports my channel and I'll see you in my next one.